Hi, this is Ariel of Engineering TrueSight. Today, we will discuss maxima, minima, and point inflection, which is part of calculus. By definition, derivative means change, that is, dy over dx or y prime means the change in y with respect to the change in x. An important application of derivative is to determine where a function attains its maximum and minimum values. That is, if y equals f of x, then y prime is the slope of the curve, and y prime is the rate of change of slope. At a given maximum point, the slope of the curve is zero, that is y prime equals zero, as we can see in the figure. The change in the slope of the curve at the maximum point is decreasing. That is, y double prime is a negative value. At the maximum point, the curve is in cave downward. At the minimum point, the slope of the curve is zero. That is, y prime equals zero, as shown in the figure. The change in the slope of the curve at the minimum point is increasing. That is, y double prime is a positive value. At the minimum point, the curve is concave upward. And for the point of inflection, the curve changes its concavity from upward to downward or vice versa. The change of the slope at the point of inflection is zero. That is, y double prime is zero. So let us take an example number one. Find the maxima, minima, and point of inflection of the function f of x equals x cubed minus 6x squared plus 9x plus 2. We have the solution. We shall equate y prime equals to 0 if we wish to get the maximum and minimum value. So we have now the equation y, which is equal to f of x, is equal to x cubed minus 6x squared plus 9x plus 2. We have to find the derivative of y with respect to x, that is y prime, just be equal to the derivative of the function x cubed minus 6x squared plus 9x plus 2. We have the resulting equation 3x squared minus 12x plus 9 equals 0. Simplifying, we get the final equation x squared minus 4x plus 3 equals 0. So this is a quadratic equation. We will be using factorization and we shall also use, if possible, we have quadratic equation. But in this case, it is factorable, so we have the value we have the factor x minus 3 and x minus 1. So we have the value of x, which is x equals 3 and x equals 1. To get the maximum or minimum, we have two choices. We can evaluate the value by using y double prime or using graph. But in this case, we have to use the y double prime. So y double prime would just be equal to 6x minus 12. So now we have to evaluate first the value of x which is 3. If x equals to 3, substitute it into the original equation, we get the value of y which is 2. Again, substitute 3 to the given y double prime equation, we get the value of 12. So 12 is a positive value, therefore, it is a minimum point. So x is at a minimum point. Again, for x equals to 1, substitute it to the original equation, we get the value of y, which is equal to 6. So y double prime, substitute the value of x, we get negative 6. So negative 6 is a negative value. Therefore, we can conclude that x equals 1 is a maximum point. So to continue, we get 
the value of y double prime and must be equal to zero for the point of inflection. So y double prime is 6x minus 12 equals zero. So simplifying the equation, we get the value of x, which is equal to two. And the final point of inflection, substituting x equals two to the original equation, we have y equals four. So now we already compute the maximum, minimum, and point of inflection, and then we have to evaluate it by using graph. So this is the graph of the function x cubed minus 6 squared plus 9x plus 2. So the maximum point, we already compute this one. We have the coordinate 1 and 6. For the minimum point, we have the coordinate 3 and 2. And for the point of inflection, we have the coordinate 2 and 4. So this is the solution to the problem number 1. So we can also use a table, get all the values of the points. So that's it. We have problem number 2. A man in a rowboat at point P, 5 km from the nearest point A, on a straight shore, wishes to reach point B, which is 6 km from A, along the shore, in the shortest time. So where should he land? If he can row 2 km per hour and walk 4 km per hour. So the solution is that we have to illustrate the problem. Again here we have point P which is directly straight to A which is 5 km is given in the problem. And we have a certain point B which is 6 km from point A. So we have a, cert a certain point X which is unknown which is at what point that he can row and he can walk the shortest time as possible so we have now the given our walking which is four kilometers per hour we have our rowing we have two kilometers per hour so we have distance equals rate times time to get the value of time we have to divide the distance over the rate so the total time possible is t rowing plus t walking so again to continue we designate the distance between a to a known point x to be the distance x so the remaining distance from x to b would just be equal to 6 minus x so we have a perfect right triangle shown here so we have the distance of rowing which is be equal to the square root of x squared plus 25 so again let us describe that the total time will just be equal to t rowing plus t walking so by using distance formula the total time would just be equal to the square root of x squared plus 25 all over 2 plus 6 minus x all over 4. So that is the equation that we want to be minimized. So just you have to differentiate that and equate to 0. So we have the value dt over dx is to differentiate the quantity square root of x squared plus 25 all over 2 plus 6 minus x all over 4. And shall be equal to zero so by using differentiation rule for a fraction we have v du over dx minus u dv over dx all over v squared so this is the result of our differentiation we have 2 times the quantity 2x all over 2 times square root of x squared plus 25 all over 2 squared plus 4 times negative 1 all over 4 squared and it is equal to 0. Simplifying the given equation, we have x all over 2 times square root of x squared plus 25 minus 1 4 equals 0. So to eradicate the radical sign, the square root sign, we have to square both sides. So x all over 2 times square root of x squared plus 25 raised to the power 2 which is be equal to on the right side we have 1 fourth raised to the power 2. The resulting equation will give us x squared all over x squared plus 25 equals 1 4. Simplifying we have 4x squared equals x squared plus 25. In this case we only have one variable so we can solve the value of x. So we have 3x squared equals 25 and the final value is x equals 2.8867 so this is the distance from a that the man should learn in order to have a minimum value of time okay so we have example number three an open rectangular box with a square ends is to be built to hold a volume of 6400 feet cube 
at a cost of 0.75 pounds per feet squared for the base and 0.25 pounds per feet squared for the sides. Find the economical dimension. So the solution is that we have to draw the box here, which is open at the top, with the dimensions of width, length, and height. So the volume of the box will just be equal to length times width times height. To construct it economically, we have to multiply it by the cost. For the sides, we have the total sides of 2WH plus 2H squared and multiply it by 0.25. So H squared happens to be length and height are equal. So I'm using here height times height, that's why it's height squared. And for the base, we have 0.75 which is WH. So economical equals 0.25 WH plus 0.5 H squared. So we have given the volume of 6,400 which is be equal to W H squared because length and height are equal. So that's why we have W H squared. We have two equations here. So two equations, we have two unknowns so we can solve the value of those variable. But first, we have to get the value of W which is be equal to 6,400 over H squared. So construction economical is equal to 1.25 so we have to substitute the value of w which is 6400 h squared to the first equation we get a final of 6400 over h plus 0.5 h squared so we have now to make it economical we have to differentiate our final one variable equation of the construction economical so dc over dh which is be equal to derivative of 8000 over h plus 0.5 h squared and shall be equal to 0. So by rules of differentiation, we have dc over dh which is equal to 8000 all over h squared plus h equals 0. So there is only one variable. So we have h cubed equals 8000. So h cubed equals 8000. We get the value of h which is equal to 20. And since l and h are equal, so 20 for both of them so we have to substitute each to the second equation which is 6400 all over h squared is equal to w and w equals 16 so the final volume dimension of the volume is 20 by 16 by 20 so width equals 16 height equals 20 and length 20 so thank you for watching and please don't forget like share and subscribe for more videos like this